Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm ID Explosive One. Let's crack into another one, huh? All right, TNT. I saw yo. it. A, it was an infographic today. Yo, yo, yo. And what it said was that there's a wide ideology gap that is opening up in the Gen Z generation. Yes. And it's saying that most. There, well, not most. Way more Gen Z women are bec- are heading more liberal, and may way more Gen Z men are heading towards conservative. Yes. And like it showed it like on a graph, and it was just like getting wider as it as it went on, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and then I got to thinking. They're talking about how like there's a lot more single people. Like, do, do you think that? Two questions. Do you think that that's what's driving that? Because because you know people political differences are huge factors in relationships like i don't care about politics very much so whatever Uh uh or what do you think is the reasoning i have an idea but i want to hear what what you have to say first oh wow well you know me man i can i can rant if if need be hey bring it on so what i will say is that i do think it's that a lot of the social things that go along with political uh what political stance you take seems to be a lot of the highlight of what we see in the news and the media. It's always the social issues, the shit that really don't matter and the shit that we honestly, both sides claim they don't want from the government. Everybody says they don't want the government interfering with your life. The fuck, the fucking right says that all the time. We don't want government interfering with anything that the state wants to do or what the people want to do. Yet you want to take rights away from people all the time. The left says the same thing yet. They don't want you to have any, uh, firearms. So go figure. Is that even a social issue? I guess not. Guns, I don't, kinda. Uh, I do, I guess it's more just to speak for the hypocr- hypocritical nature hypocrisy of hypocrisy of yeah, exactly. Well, but right. when it comes to like the social issues, like oh, should the homosexuals get married, or should we have uh, should we have the Bible in school? Well, no, like the like the liberals are like. Yeah, it's your body, your choice, but you can't defend yourself. And then the the other side is like, that baby is important, but you better have a gun to do it. Like, and you're like, but <laughs> it, okay, you're sure. like, it's like it's sure. it's very like, you sure, very extreme on everything. Yes, right? and that's just one aspect of of when it, at least when it comes to hypocrisy on, on both sides. Um, but the social issues are important, and I, and I do feel like a lot of people tend to tether these social issues to the party that they hold. And I don't know if party identity should be the social issues, where it should be the economic issues, which is the focus of government. It's economics. Not necessarily should little Timmy be able to wear a, a dress to school or not. Right. No, I agree. Uh, so- I, well, what, what do you think is causing... Like the disconnect between men and women. Okay, and like- so let's get right into it, man. We can call it the hickamores. We can call it the fact that uh, it all stems from from COVID. But it was a pre. But COVID was. But the the precursor to COVID is, was before that. Men and women aren't talking as much. Social media, the fact that the internet is everything. We we don't talk to women as much, all right? And I'm not just talking about me and you, you know, guys of our age and cohort, but I'm talking about younger kids, of uh, uh, course, with Gen Z. It's been a long time that women have been kicking us out of the bedroom for for what? us not meeting, for us not meeting the grade. And now we're like, guys are tired of it, all right? And I'm not going to say me because I'm perfectly fine. Women, you do whatever you want to. And when I say bedroom, I don't necessarily mean like kicking us out of the bedroom. I mean like proverbial kicking us out of the bedroom, you know? I don't know what you mean. Yeah. Hmm. How can I say this, Jonas? With a lot holding of guys, sex? A lot of guys feel like uh, expectations and what do you call Expectations from women are are reaching a standard of what something that is unobtainable oh i see what you're saying like like the expectations it are almost impossible to obtain yes or they want like you want you to be fit good looking have a nice job be like whatever is that what you're talking about yes so i don't know there's been there's been this rise of like the the manosphere right I'm not a manosphere dude. I'm a oh, femme. This is a manosphere. Are you not familiar with the manosphere? I guess not. Maybe I'm. It's essentially. Is that the uh, Andrew Tate? It is. That. It's essentially guys who have that methodology. Oh, like red you, pill incel stuff. 
okay, we can you can say that, you know, you or you can say they're just taking their, taking it back. They're taking their their own self worth and they're putting it forward. You know, no know, know what you're worth, King. Um, no, but what? But then there's also the know what you're worth, Queen. So there is that. There 100 percent is that. But when you ask to know what you're worth, Queen, would you date a guy who works at McDonald's? And they say no, absolutely not. And then you go up to a guy, and you tell him, "Would you date a woman that works at McDonald's?" I mean, is she hot? <laughs> okay. okay. So when it comes to what a guy wants, a guy will take way. <sighs> okay, so the way I've heard it described on Fresh and Fit, I don't watch Fresh and Fit, but I'm familiar with it. It is another podcast in the same uh, vein as oh, like as like Andrew, a Tate. Andrew Tate type podcast. Okay. It's, it's kind of like a. Uh, a, a Afrocentric version of okay, it. Okay, gotcha. But gotcha. the way I hear it is that a low quality female can find herself a high quality guy way more easier than a low quality male can find a high quality female. You oh. very seldom see the the adverse to it. Like it's like like a like a um like an executive woman with a guy who works at McDonald's. Exactly. But like executive men will date a waitress all day. Exactly. Yeah. So I do feel as like when it comes to some of those social foibles, I feel like, yeah, you want to go conservative with that if you're kind of pissed off. I kind of feel as like men ain't happy out here, man. We've well, been the beaten. We've been the beaten stick for a long time, and it's you know. I uh I saw actually saw a couple videos like a random a while ago, and it was like beating um stick. people you know people interview people in the street kind of thing. Like hey, they ask them questions, girls, whatever, and they're like, what they were like, what kind what kind of salary do you want from a man that you're gonna date? And like almost yeah, every one of them was yeah. like a hundred and twenty five, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, exactly. and I was just like and like. They're like, oh, do you think that's realistic? And they're like, yeah, why wouldn't that be realistic? And then you ask any of them, this is how much they make. No, I don't think they did. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, but what what I've also go ahead, give um, me give heard, me your take. No, I, no, feel I like mean, I, said I, enough. I, 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 what I think also has happened too is in years past, a long time ago, you know, but when there were like the social constructs were more like quote unquote traditional in the fifties, like man works, woman stays at home, like whatever. Fair. So, so there wasn't a lot of women who had well-paying jobs that could take care of themselves. They had to rely on a man to like take care of them. So now that the tables are turning and they can take care of themselves, they're like, what do I need a man to take care of me if I can financially support myself? I mean, if that's the only thing that you're looking for a man for, then yeah. But well, I thought, right. I, I mean, thought well, the, I but feel, what you're saying in your example about men and women is like, is she hot? So all you're looking for is a hot piece of ass. I will say is that it takes less to attract men than it does for than it does to attract women. Uh, obviously, it's just like the the genetic makeup and the way personalities work. Yeah, I will but say. I'm not saying is that that's the only thing that attracts me to a woman. No, no, I'm not saying you. But but I will I will agree with something you just said. I think when it comes to superficiality in the sexes, when if if you're a superficial woman. You are way more superficial than a superficial man. Like a man, yeah, a man might might want a model, but he'll he'll still go for like a cute. Where I feel like if a woman is like, I want a hot guy, they're going for like the hottest of the hot. Like oh. I want him to be like ripped. I want him to have a like. There's a lot superficial in a lot of different ways. Like you said, like a man, like you said, men will settle for less. If their if superficiality is what they want, right? Like someone like me, like I, yeah, I want I feel you to be like the the higher level men are looking for more superficiality. Okay, Vince, Vince McMahon wasn't looking for a, a college graduate with a with her MBA and a, and a degree in physics and and the smartest woman and making earning this kind. No, we just want somebody, you know, you know, a, we want somebody fun. What's what's that mean, loose woman? Oh, hey, loose with her morals at least. Loose with her morals. And honestly, wow. the higher up you get on the pay chain, the more you want those loose morals, right? Is that how it goes? A hundred percent. These rich entertainers are not marrying geniuses. They don't want a genius. They want somebody who's going to shut the fuck up. Somebody who doesn't mind if they cheat. And somebody who's just gonna like uh, take care of the home. Like be, when be I come happy, home, be happy that they have a lot of like it's exactly. the um, it's like the Anna Nicole Smith from the night. Like 
young hot thing dating a 80 year old billionaire exactly like she's like i'm happy to be here and, sort and, of situation and i'm def i'm really i want to get like hammer home the fact that i'm not caping for any of these these manosphere because i don't believe in any of the most of the sh shit that they say i don't believe some of the stuff they have some talking points I but mean, you gotta listen to i your... believe that anyone should stand up for what they believe their worth is but can yeah. your worth be exaggerated hey, it definitely yeah, can. yeah yeah it yeah definitely for sure can. yeah it definitely yeah. can I just feel as like, I feel like a lot of the social issues that are going on, I feel like men feel like they're un a lot of younger people, young white American men feel like they are under attack, either whether it be racially, whether it be our, our sex being under attack be or because uh, of the uprising of LGBTQ community and the more acceptance. I'm not saying is that any of these things are justified, but I could understand why they why they feel attacked. I would be interested to see in, I mean, in a couple of stats in general. One, what what percentage of the U.S. population, like say like fifty and under, mm -hmm. men and women are single, mm -hmm. and then you know it's more than it has been ever before in this country, right? Right, right, and then and then see like the Gen Z. You know what I mean? Like I think I think a lot more people are staying single longer because it's and it's weird. I don't understand why exactly. Uh, because we secretly hate each other, but we need each other to keep everything going. We need each other to procreate the race, but yeah. we hate each other. It's so funny okay. that men and women have hated each other literally since the beginning of time. Like when as soon as Eve beat that at apple, I know Adam was like this bitch. You know it. You know he rolled his eyes in the back of his head, put his forehead on his palm like he was Captain Picard and said, this bitch ate the fruit. Was it her that ate it? It was her that ate it. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. Funny enough, Jonas, in the Bible, it was her that ate the fruit, but it wasn't until Adam took a bite that man realized that they had sinned. Yeah. What does that mean? What's the, what's the hip meaning behind that? I don't know. You take what you want from it. All right. Okay. You take what you want from that. Damn. That's just biblical stuff. But uh, as far as socially, I really hope that we come to terms with it. I, I don't really know how you change the way that this country is going because it feels like it's an unstoppable force. Um, but but something has to be done to repair some of the, the social. Yeah. All I know is I'm not a Gen Zer, but it's hard to date out here. I mean, it, that's been pretty consistent with people of our, our age for a while now. Everybody, I mean, you know, you've always heard, well, once you get to, it's it's tough out here to date, and it is. Um, I, I just worry about... The kids? No, I worry mean, about the I, children? I really do worry about, like, the, the future of the country. We're making less babies, so they, they get rid of abortion so that we make more babies. I feel like it's bad when the government has a, when the government has to step in. I feel like it's like it's 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 red alert when a the government lot of feels are like they got to step that in. That we are in the twilight of the American Empire. That like we don't realize it's done. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but like because like the way that our debt has grown, mm -hmm, the interest mm -hmm. on our debt, the do the strength of the dollar, people trying to figure out new ways to pay for oil and commodities mm -hmm. other than the dollar, and it's like it's like. It's like we've we've passed our prime, but we don't know it, and then it's gonna crash one day. So what do, what do you do if uh, if you find that you're losing a lot of money? It's very funny because it speaks to it, it, and I, this is totally like a, a tangent, but it kind of speaks to the times right now. Why is there so much inflation? Because we printed a ton of money. But why is there so much inflation when all of these companies are reporting record high gross income? They, greed. They know something we don't. Greed. It doesn't take it doesn't take a genius accountant to realize is that what you just said is right, and that when the chips fall or when the other shoe drops, money is going to be a scarcity. So all of these rich millionaires, billionaires are. Just, just baking their safety blankets. They're getting their golden parachutes, and they're like, "Look, we're gonna fleece the public now because shit's about to hit the fan." That's what I really think is going on with this.
this country is that yes, the shit is about to hit the fan and all the millionaires and the landlords that are raising the rent and everybody's like, well, why are the prices going up? They know something we don't. UAP, get, get it while you can. The aliens, Jonas. Oh, is it? <laughs> is, is, uh, is Biden really a reptile? Like he's gonna, he's gonna rip his skin off and look, man, you think it's a game until it happens. It's funny till it's not. That's a hot take. On that note, <laughs> funny till it's not. That's gonna be our new cat at the end of every episode. That's a hot take, TNT. On the next episode, me. that's all the time we have today's episode. Please go to thecrazytown.com and subscribe for Jonas. George Epstein didn't kill himself. Jeff. Say George, George Epstein. Did I say George? Is that his Epstein? brother? He's yeah. not, he's not he didn't kill himself. Neither either. of them did. We out.